Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 3 on enzymes. There are four parts to this chapter. Today we'll be going to cover enzyme structure and the mode of action. Now, I'm pretty sure you know what enzymes are already, but here's a little recap. Yeah, Enzymes are biological catalysts and they can be either involved in building a new compound, so synthesizing a new compound, or breaking it down. It can work both ways. They are often used to control metabolic reactions in your body. Now some features are this. It speeds up or increases the rate of chemical reactions in the body. It's specific. This is a very important specific word. One enzyme only can bind to one or a few substrates. Only. It remains unchanged at the end of a reaction, meaning that only a small amount is necessary for the reaction to be sped up. Now, because of its function and because it's effective in small amounts, we say that enzymes are able to have a high turnover number. Okay, it is able to produce a high turnover number because it can catalyze many reactions per unit time. How do enzymes catalyze reactions exactly though? Enzymes lower the activation energy of chemical reactions. Uh, activation energy is should be something you have heard of already. Activation energy is basically energy needed for a chemical reaction to successfully form products. It's usually illustrated here in the Gibbs free energy graph. And you can see it here. You can see that the y-axis is energy and the x-axis is the cost of reaction, sometimes also labeled time. So energy against time. We see the reactants on one side and the products on the right side of the graph. And there's this little curve here that shows us the energy barrier. You need to overcome this energy barrier in order to start the reaction. This amount of energy needed for it to successfully form products is called activation energy. You can see here, without an enzyme, without enzyme, this activation energy is quite high. Um, one of the common analogies used is like a ball that you have to push up the hill in order for it to roll down. So in for the uncatalyzed reaction, the ball needs to be pushed up a lot more in order to be pushed down the hill. Yeah, this means that the activation energy is higher. However, with the enzyme, so in the catalyzed reaction, the ball only needs to be pushed up a little bit in order to be pushed down the hill. The activation energy here is much lower than the activation energy here, which is high. Now we say that this provides an alternative pathway for reactions to occur and therefore it speeds up the speed of reaction. Now back to structure. All enzymes are globular proteins. They are all spherical or ball-shaped, mostly tertiary structures, some quaternary. This is a recap of the previous chapter, okay? They all have pre precise 3D structure due to interactions between R groups of amino acids, and they are soluble because Number one, all hydrophobic R groups of the amino acids are facing inwards and hydrophilic R groups are facing the outside and it's usually illustrated in a diagram like this. These traits here apply to all globular proteins. All enzymes are globular proteins. Okay, moving on to the next thing. Active site of enzymes. This is an important component of an enzyme. Yeah, This is the site where substrate binds to. And when we say bind, we mean that the enzyme must be complementary in shape to the substrate. So the substrate is able to fit in. Now, all enzymes are specific and it is the active site that gives this specificity. The shape of the active site determines which substrates it can bind to particularly, specifically. This word specific is very important 
This word complementary in shape is also really important and you will see it again and again throughout this chapter and throughout your syllabus. Now, what gives the active site its specificity? What determines its shape? Well, the entire primary structure of the polypeptide chain, right, the sequence of amino acids in the entire polypeptide determines the tertiary structure. It determines how it's coiled and folded into a 3D structure. But the active site only actually has a few catalytic amino acids. Okay, so not all the amino acids are involved at the active site, only a few. These few amino acids are precisely positioned in the 3D structure, and they're actually not necessarily beside each other in the primary sequence as shown in this diagram here. Yeah, they can be quite far apart uh, in the chain from each other, but because of the 3D coiling and folding of the enzyme structure, they can be brought closer together at the active site. Now, these catalytic amino acids are the ones which have the R groups with the right property in order to interact with the substrate here. And therefore, when the substrate is near, these few amino acids and its R groups will react or temporarily form bonds with the substrate and um, catalyze the reaction. Now, more about um, structure. Now, we know that the active site is complementary in shape to the substrate. And this here is the traditional model. Yeah, the lock and key mechanism. It shouldn't be new to you. When we say lock, we mean um, enzyme, enzymes lock, and key refers to the substrate. In this model, the active site does not change shape. And the shape of the active site is fully complementary to the shape of the substrate. The result is you pretty much expect the substrate to fit perfectly into the active site. But a more recent studies, well, not one study, but many studies have shown that this other mechanism might be more probable. Yeah, this is called the induced fit mechanism. Now, in this mechanism, the active site is flexible and molds around the substrate. So you can see here that, you know, it's kind of the shape, but when the substrate comes near, it changes shape to fit around the substrate. So the shape of the active site, we say, is only partially complementary to the shape of the substrate. And the result of this model Okay, this molding and fitting around is a better fit for both the substrate and the enzyme binding. So yeah, the induced fit mechanism is the more recent one and probably the more accurate mechanism. Now, as we are on the topic of the structure of enzymes, I think the next question to ask is where do enzymes actually operate. So enzymes are actually everywhere in the cell. They're in the cytoplasm. They could be in lysosomes. They could be in um, other vesicles. Uh, some are intracellular and some are extracellular as well. So intracellular is inside cells. Okay, so internal use. And some enzymes can be synthesized in the cell and then released to the outside for external use. So think lysosomes, which uh, can fuse with the cell surface membrane here in the process of exocytosis. Oops, I didn't spell it right. Exocytosis. And when the lysosome fuses with the cell membrane, this releases its contents of lysozyme outside the cell. Maybe an example of uh, secretion of lysozyme is in your tears. Your tears have lysozyme in order to, you know, clean your, your eyes. Yep, yep. So, that's it for the enzyme structure. Let's move on to the mode of action. Now, as we enter the mode of action, I need to establish a few short forms you may see around in the slides. E here stands for enzyme and S here stands for substrate. At first, the enzyme and substrate, you know, exist independently, but later on it binds to form the enzyme-substrate 
complex. I'm going to say that again. This is the enzyme substrate complex. And after this forms and something occurs, okay, products are formed. So what you have as a result is enzyme plus product. You realize here the enzyme remains unchanged in the reaction. Okay, let's do this, but let's do this in detail. Am I right? So let's start with enzyme and substrate. So enzymes and substrates in a reaction actually move and collide randomly, as you can see here. And it's moving around, they're just colliding randomly, and um, only collisions with the right orientation and enough energy will result in a successful reaction. So not all collisions will result in a reaction. Yeah, only a certain orientation and enough energy. I like to think of this as, you know, um, those cliche dramas where the guy and the girl um, holding books collide into each other and all the books drop on the floor and somehow that is a romantic thing. Okay, for that to happen, for a reaction to occur between the guy and the girl, they must collide with the right orientation, so they would actually collide, and with enough energy so that the books will fall out of their hands. So yeah, that would result in a successful reactions and apparently romance and love. But anyways, enzymes and substrates are like that. And only the enzyme that has an active site with a specific shape that is complementary to the substrate will be able to bind the substrate. So it's not any enzyme in any substrate, yeah? It must be the enzyme that has a specific active site with complementary shape to the substrate. Now, I wanted to talk about this word complementary a little bit more. I, I didn't say this just now, but I'm gonna say this now. You can say complementary to substrate, but you cannot say similar to substrate. Now, this is wrong. This is correct. Why? Now, let's say the substrate is triangular in shape. This is complementary in shape. If I say that they are similar in shape, I'm telling people that this is a substrate. Ha! Huh, similar to, into a substrate means this is my enzyme. This is similar shapes. This is a complementary shape. So, yep. Yeah. Use the word complementary, not similar. Yes. Okay. That's the enzyme and substrate. Yeah. Secondly, the formation of the enzyme substrate complex. So, if it collides with enough energy in the right orientation, substrates would interact with R groups of the catalytic amino acids at the active site. They would form temporary bonds with those amino acids and the active, shite, active sites would change shape to mold around the substances. This is the induced fit model that we just read just now. Yeah. And basically, yep, this forms the enzyme substrate complex and as a result, the substrate is binding strongly to the active site. Now this is a diagram here uh, that shows you in a different way how this happens. We can see here that um, as the substrate is entering the molecule, right, the enzyme here, the active site is actually partially complementary only, but the induced process plays a part in bringing out the chemical changes because as the substrate draws near, collides in the right energy right orientation and enough energy, this causes, I'm sorry, um, some amino acid molecules, right, to interact with the substrate molecule in a specific manner. Now, only some amino acids here, again, are involved in the active sites. You can see these other amino acid residues. What are they doing? They are still functioning. They are interacting to form the three-dimensional structure of the enzyme and uh, allows flexibility also for 
the active site shape to mold around the substrate, therefore ensuring a perfect fit. Okay, that leads me to my next point, product formation. So we have the enzyme substrate, they collide, they bind, and they form a complex, right? So now we can talk about how products are formed. So interactions with the substrates, with the active sites, as we saw in the previous slide, with the catalytic amino acids and all, right? These will actually cause a few things. It brings substrates closer in the right position in a uh, two catalyzed reaction. It puts strain on them and uh, this causes bonds to break or form more easily. It allows transfer or charges or groups and overall this would lower activation energy. Okay again the interactions of the substrates together with the catalytic amino acids on the active site brings them close together and puts strain on them. This is like the main point. And this lowers activation energy and allows the reaction to be sped up and the products to form. The products form are stable and is able to leave the active site and the enzymes would remain unchanged and ready to do this uh, reaction all over again. Okay, so that's the end of today's lecture. We have learned the enzyme structure and the mode of action. Uh, enzyme structure main bits are the active site structure that is very important. Many keywords on that slide as well. And the mode of action here is something that comes out a lot in exams as well so yeah i hope you enjoyed this lecture remember that doing the assignment or quiz is your proof of attendance so remember to do the homework and i'll see you next video bye bye